This is a uh, uh, thanks to the organizers for uh, all their great work. Getting rid of the X, yeah. <laughs> this is a joint work with uh, Savante and uh, Jeremy, who's not yet here. Uh, this is, I've been working on this problem for a long time, and a lot of you have heard me give maybe even multiple invited talks on this, but this is the first one that I could like present to uh, a couple of referees and uh, actually uh, say that we've got the hard results uh, rather than just hand-waving. Uh, of course, uh, it's dedicated to Philippe. Uh, so I'll go quickly through uh, the problem. We're going to talk about analyzing an algorithm. Uh, for sure, and this is actually really a poster child for algorithm science. It uh, couldn't have gotten this result with, uh, without the analysis, and really the analysis was also informed by experiments. Uh, so the problem is how many different values are there in a stream of data items? Uh, so a uh, reference application is like a web log. Uh, so this is a particular one I've been using for a while. Uh, how many different string, how many different people have uh, clicked on my website? Uh, and so, uh, and that's for decades, uh, the solution has been just sort them and then count the different ones because all the ones that are the same will be together. Uh, and that was in Unix in the 70s. It's still in SQL. Uh, people use this still because uh, it's there. You just say uh, sort minus U and it's there. Uh, the problem is that, uh, and you can actually do order of magnitude better just by using a hash table, but the problem is that the stream might be much too big to fit all the values in memory. So you can't uh, have a table with one entry for every element in the stream. Maybe there's trillions of items in the stream. Maybe it's uh, a web blog running for a year or something like that. So instead, what we want is to estimate. We want to find a way to have an estimate of the value of the number of distinct values in the stream. And there's plenty of applications for which that's very useful. So I define the practical cardinality estimation problem uh, as the following. You make one pass through the stream. Uh, you only get to touch the item for a tiny amount of time. This stuff is implemented in machine language on network switches, for example. Uh, you want to use as little memory as possible. That's kind of the goal. And you want to have as accurate an estimate as possible. Uh, and then, again, there's plenty of applications where uh, just having an estimate rather than the exact count uh, is worthwhile and necessary. And these are just uh, some uh, examples. And there's many, many examples. Uh, these algorithms are uh, very widely used uh, in lots of applications. Uh, so just to fix ideas on the scope, let's say that uh, you've got billions of streams, each one having trillions of values. So you can only afford to touch the values a little bit, and you can't have that much memory because you've got billions times the amount, amount of memory. Maybe you have this for uh, every customer if you're Visa or something like that. Uh, so, uh, so the question, the basic question that we're talking about is how much memory do you need to estimate the number of distinct values, say, to within 10% accuracy? Uh, and the answer is really surprising. It's much less than you might think. So that's what I'm going to try to convince you of uh, today. Now, this is, uh, I got to, that thing's bothering me. Let me get rid of it. This is an old problem, uh, actually. Uh, 1983, so that's like before many people in this audience were born. Uh, it was introduced uh, by uh, Flagellet, called probabilistic counting. Uh, and that is a great algorithm. Uh, there's another one similar uh, by Wegman that you know, just uh, talked to Philippe and then Philippe analyzed it. Uh, and then uh, that algorithm, uh, I won't, I don't have time to go into the details, but it was a great algorithm and people were very excited by the idea that you could do this estimation with really pretty small amount of memory. Uh, then there was a theory paper uh, that got a lot of attention and then a lot of other theory papers uh, that looked at this uh, from a complexity standpoint, but nothing uh, came out of that really uh, related to practice. Uh, the real contribution was log-log counting, uh, which was last year 
uh, won the Test of Time Award at ASA. And that uh, cut the uh, memory requirement uh, by a lot. Uh, and I'll talk about that in just a second. So that's 20 years uh, till the next uh, uh, piece of progress on this. Uh, and then hyperlog log is the algorithm that's most widely used today. And that was just a few years later. Uh, and I'll talk about that just a little bit. Uh, and then people have looked at other approaches, more operations, different statistics uh, for uh, what you do uh, in this context. Uh, and now, uh, and Jeremy wrote a great paper on this that will appear in the collected works. Maybe Mark will tell us something about the collected works of flagellate someday. So, so there's a lot of detail known about this, but uh, I don't have time to talk about it too much. Uh, but another 20 years later, uh, and we have, uh, I think, progress uh, on this problem. So uh, that's a 40-year time span uh, studying this problem, which is pretty uh, unusual. Uh, okay, so uh, the reason uh, that uh, it's, it's endured is the solutions are really uh, simple, elegant, and efficient. So they're appealing. Uh, so uh, the first one uh, really has many of the main ideas. Uh, but this, so uh, Flagellate's three uh, papers have the same key steps. So first thing you do is you hash the items so that you're working with random values. Uh, second one is you develop a sketch that's a small amount of memory that enables uh, estimation of the cardinality. Uh, and you split the stream into M different substreams uh, and record all of their estimates uh, independently, and then average the estimates and analyze the bias. And all the methods are based on uh, those uh, same ideas. Uh, the first one, probabilistic counting, used 32-bit values uh, for the sketch uh, for each stream. Uh, log log algorithm sketches are just five bit values. Uh, I updated them for this paper uh, for 21st century. So now we use 64 bit values uh, and that's enough. Uh, we don't have to worry about going further. Uh, and the log log uh, really uh, has to be bytes because nobody's gonna take the time and effort to deal with six bit bytes. <laughs> So that's the basis of comparison that uh, we're trying to improve on here. Uh, and I got to go through this quick or I'll never get to the, uh, our actual algorithm. Uh, so uh, hashing the values uh, is a thing uh, and it can be done in just a few machine code in instructions. And it just means that we can work with binary integers, uh, not long strings. Uh, and the thing is that they appear random except factors, some values are equal, and we're gonna to try to estimate the number of distinct values there are in a random 64-bit integer. Uh, second step, uh, the idea is to focus on the trailing ones. Uh, and, uh, and this is uh, elementary uh, for many people uh, in this audience, uh, but the number of trailing ones is, uh, bottom line is about log n. Uh, in a random uh, a binary number. Uh, and uh, we, we can go ahead and, uh, the maximum number of trailing ones, uh, sorry, the maximum number of trailing ones that you see in n different values is about log n. Uh, and that's uh, elementary and I don't have time to really uh, discuss all these details. Uh, the really important thing is you wanna get m different estimates and then average them in some way. Uh, but you don't want to run n independent hash functions. That's too expensive. So instead, there's this idea of stochastic splitting. Uh, you don't want to just alternate because that gives bad things. What you want to do is use a second hash to divide it into m independent streams. Do your experiment for each one of those uh, and then average it. And the thing with a second hash is that equal values all go to the same stream. So it really is like running independent uh, experiments, but it's done very efficiently. And again, this idea is in the 1983 paper. Uh, and then the final thing is to average and analyze. So with log-log counting, use the arithmetic mean, and that turns out to be related to a property of tries. It's a studied since the 70s, uh, and you can figure out the bias and the accuracy of the actual standard error. Uh, and it uses, again, eight M bits. Uh, and then hyperlog log a little bit later with the idea is to use the geometric mean. Uh, and again, you can get the bias and the standard error 
and it's much more accurate. 1.39 versus 1.04. And it's not all that much harder to compute and it's the same amount of memory. So that's the setup, that's the uh, history. Uh, so now uh, the goal is uh, we wanna have an algorithm that just uses one bit per stream rather than eight bits per stream, uh, which is a lot less. Uh, but what's the bias and what's the accuracy? Uh, so uh, that's really uh, been the goal of this work uh, for quite a while. Well, it turns out that there's uh, a very simple algorithm that almost achieves this. Uh, I'm not gonna do this historically, but I think uh, I can convince you about this algorithm. Uh, and the algorithm is based on starting with a rough, rough estimate of uh, the number of, uh, <clears throat> of the log of the number of elements in each, number of distinct elements in each stream. So, uh, so a rough estimate of T uh, log of N over N. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna compute the fraction of the number of substreams that have no values with more than T trailing ones. Uh, and again, that's log that goes back to the max is about the log of N over N. Uh, so that's what we're going to compute. Uh, and then we'll use two to the T to estimate N over N. And there's going to be a bias factor. And I'll tell you about the bias factor on the next slide. And that's uh, natural log of one over beta. So that's, an, that's the algorithm. And it's extremely simple algorithm that I can even put the code up. Uh, it uses, uh, so M's the number of subtrees, T estimate log N over N. Uh, so it uses an M-bit array. I, I wrote it as if uh, <clears throat> there's a programming language that supports bit arrays, but they don't really. So you have to use shifting and masking, but that makes it easy to explain. Uh, we need the number of trailing ones. Again, that turns out to be uh, easy to compute. Uh, and we need the number of ones. That's the p-value. That's the estimate. Uh, or one minus that over n is the number of zeros, the fraction of zeros in the sketch. Uh, and that's just to uh, compute the bias. So that's the whole algorithm. For every element in the screen, you hash it twice, uh, once to get the value, the other to get the substream, uh, and then uh, you just, uh, if it's more than T trailing ones, you set the one bit of the corresponding sub for the corresponding substream. And then at the end, some number of one bits are set, uh, and you use those to figure out uh, the bias. That's the whole algorithm. Now, uh, so there's a few details there. Uh, the big thing is this is only effective uh, if you got the initial guess right. Uh, but it turns out that it's remarkably robust, uh, really remarkably, and I'll talk about that uh, in a second. So that's a, a simple algorithm that uh, almost gets us there one bit uh, per stream. Uh, so uh, this is uh, just an elementary mean value analysis. And I think a lot of people in this room uh, could sketch this one out. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, on it. Uh, so uh, if you have V distinct values, uh, the probability uh, that uh, there's at least T trailing ones, one over two to the T, obviously, the probability that no atom has T trailing ones or that the bit corresponding extreme is zero is one minus one over two to the T to the V for the V values. Uh, and that's about E to the minus V over two to the T. Uh, so therefore, after you've processed V for stream, the, it's really, it's just a binomial distribution with that probability. Uh, and then therefore the expected number of zeros in the sketch is just M times. So everybody, uh, uh, people are nodding. So I think I'm having lost people on this. And so uh, the algorithm terminates with uh, expected number of zeros in the sketch equal to M e to the minus V over two T and that's beta. Uh, and so uh, the number of uh, values is the correction thing is uh, two to the T uh, and the bias is log one over beta, where beta is the number of zeros left in the sketch after this is all over. 
Now, obviously, if beta is small, like if the sketch all fills up with ones, uh, that's not going to be too accurate. Uh, and if beta is uh, large, like you never found one, uh, that uh, it's all zeros, that, that's going to be uh, not too accurate either. Uh, so that's why we have uh, that bias. But the real crucial uh, breakthrough on this was uh, uh, Savante thought this was maybe elementary and maybe some other people would too, but uh, actually uh, proving uh, how accurate it is uh, and even the distribution. So it's asymptotically normal uh, with the right mean, uh, but the standard deviation of uh, standard error is uh, constant over the square root of M, where this constant depends on beta. Uh, and the pr full proof of that uh, is in the paper. Uh, and I asked the probabilist, so it's kind of a probabilistic proof. Uh, maybe the method of moments and or many other methods that people might know uh, might work uh, to get this problem. But the thing that got, got me going was uh, the uh, explicit expression for the standard error uh, on this thing. Uh, so it's a plot that looks like that. Uh, and again, uh, if the number of zeros is small, it gets bad really quickly. Uh, if the number of zeros uh, is large, it gets bad a little more slowly. But it's a big wide range. Uh, so like, like for almost half the range, this constant is less than 1.5. And I'll talk about the constant. Uh, all the algorithms have standard error constant over square root of m. Depends on what the constant is, how good the algorithm is. Uh, and just uh, so if you say 1.5, it's what we consider reasonable, uh, then, uh, well, so, so this is up to a million. If t equals 5, it's too small. But that's the range where the standard error is reasonable. Uh, t equals six, it's a little bigger, seven. But t equals eight, it's like pretty good fraction of the range is covered. Uh, so <clears throat> that gives us the information that we can use in a lot of practical situations. So this is just an example. So say I have a million entries, how many different things? So the first question is, how accurate an answer do you want? Well, that's choosing the value of M, the number of substreams. So, uh, I want it to be 95% sure to be within 10%. I know it's normal. Uh, so I just take M equals 1024, and that gets me within 10%, uh, just because I know uh, it's uh, uh, normal, and I know the uh, standard error. Uh, so that's the first thing. And then uh, you need to know what the value of T is in order to run the algorithm. Uh, and so, uh, if I have a million, I'm pretty sure that it's somewhere between 100,000 and 900,000. And so just take T equals eight. And if you do that, you've got your answer. So this, this algorithm is actually really useful in a lot of contexts. Uh, like uh, maybe uh, you get, you just take the web hits that you get every day. Uh, and if the next day, you use that as your estimate. And if significantly less or significantly more, you want to know about that and ring a bell. This algorithm will give you that. It gives you the estimate, and it gives you how good the estimate is, uh, which is uh, really useful in a lot of uh, contexts. Uh, and so this is uh, just validation, just running experiments. So this is uh, running the thing 10,000 times. Uh, and uh, the histogram with you know 50, 50 intervals, uh, and it's just normal. Uh, it's just uh, experimental validation that it's normal with the right standard error. Uh, this is another way of looking at it, where uh, we just uh, every uh, ten thousand we run for up to a million for every ten thousand trials. We kind of spread out the distribution, and again, it, no matter where you are. Uh, there, there's a range where the standard error gets bigger, but it slowly gets bigger, uh, and so you can't even notice it uh, in this. Uh, so that's just validation of this hyperbit T algorithm. Uh, okay, so that's good. That's one bit, uh, but you need that rough guess. Uh, and the, <clears throat> the truth problem is it's not a streaming algorithm. You can't run this thing uh, for unlimited stream. Eventually, the thing is going to uh, fill up with ones because uh, you have a fixed value of T. Uh, 
Uh, so what we wanna do is eliminate the need to provide this rough estimate of the cardinality. Uh, and this was the idea that I had at the end of my invited talk in 2015. I'd uh, say, well, let's make T a variable and increment it as, as needed. Uh, and I remember I flashed up a slide at the end of this talk uh, and uh, then said, okay, thank you, and put the slide off because I just wrote it out like as a fantasy. Uh, and actually it worked pretty well. Uh, so start at T equals one. You, you maintain not just the sketch for T, but the sketch for T plus one, because we're gonna be incrementing T. Uh, and it's when it's half full, increment T, then set the sketch to sketch two and go ahead and increment T uh, at, at some point and then try to estimate uh, the error. Uh, setting sketch two to zero is a kind of drastic set step because really you wanna have a third sketch for T plus two and so forth. So there's a lot of questions like, why do I stop when it's half full? Why not three quarters full or quarter full or something? Uh, why increment by one? Uh, what's the bias? Uh, what's the accuracy? Those are uh, all questions uh, that have been fooling around with for uh, since 2015. It's a lot of parameters. You can't really address this without mathematical analysis. And fortunately, this hyperbit T analysis gives us a way to answer uh, all of these questions definitively. So uh, let's look at it. So. Uh, so this is hyperbit bit, and I'll just give you the algorithm. So what we're going to do is increment by four. We're going to keep, why four? Well, I'll show you in a minute. We're going to increment by four uh, when the sketch for T fills up, and I'll tell you what I mean by that, uh, increment by four and update the sketches. So this is uh, uh, just the slight extension of the algorithm I just showed you, where we keep two sketches, uh, we check if the number of trailing ones is more than T for the first sketch, if it's more than T plus four for the second sketch. And then we look to see if it's first sketch is filled up, actually 98.8%, not half. Uh, it's better to let it fill up like really a lot. Uh, <clears throat> and then if it is, then we increment T by four, uh, put the second sketch into the first and zero out, initialize the second sketch. Uh, and then actually the uh, uh, log of one over beta is the actual bias. Uh, and actually the accuracy is the uh, C sub beta uh, over square root of M. Uh, let's see, I got stuff over here. Uh, and again, uh, these things are all uh, easily computed. Uh, and uh, in terms of the uh, hacking details, there's a lot of information uh, in the paper about that. But trust me, it's only a few operations uh, per item. Uh, okay, so uh, where do we, why do we use 4.988, 98.8 uh, and so forth? Uh, that's what's on the next slide. So uh, how much to increment T? So the key to this is to use the analysis. So let's say that we wanted to keep track of all the future sketches. So we can uh, go right ahead. So uh, M2 to the T log beta, that's our estimate of the number of distinct values uh, if we're using T. If we're using T plus I, then I just uh, add the uh, two to the T plus I divide by two to the I. And there's a number of beta sub I uh, in there, which would be uh, the fraction of zeros in the sketch that we expect in the sketch for T plus I. So just setting the estimates for the number of distinct values equal if we were using a different value of T. And then what we wanna do is solve that equation for beta sub I, uh, and you get, uh, you get that. Uh, so that'll tell you the number of uh, the fraction of zeros we expect in the sketch for T plus I. And that's important information. Uh, here's the table, and this is why uh, we uh, increment by four. Uh, so if we have 97% zeros, say it's even better for 98.8, but say 97% uh, <coughs> ones, 0.3% zeros, it says that the sketch for uh, T plus four will be 80% zeros at that point. And the sketch for T plus eight will be more than 99% zeros. Where, which one? 
put the eyes on Christ, him both in that particular Oh yeah, there must be a typo. There's some. Yeah. Yeah, probably the first one. Uh, let's see. Yeah. There's some um yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh so but it's into Yeah, just delete that. Yeah. Yeah, right. It's already taken care of. Um Okay, so anyway, it's intuitive that as we go out, as eyes bigger, we have uh, lots of zeros uh, in the sketch. Uh, so uh, this gives us uh, quantitatively exactly what we're at. So at uh, T plus eight, the sketch is almost all zeros. So that's why we don't have to keep a third sketch because the third sketch would be almost zeros. We will just assume it's almost zeros and not make that much uh, of an error. So that tells us increment T uh, by four because the sketch for T plus eight would be nearly all zeros. Uh, if we increment by less than four, then we're gonna be ignoring some non-zero bits in there and uh, our analysis is gonna have uh, some error that we don't understand. Uh, so, and the other thing about that is, if you do that, then the analysis that I just gave for hyperbit T is going to apply throughout. It, it, the situation is exactly if we had started with the current value of T, except for this little bit that maybe we ignored one or two bits at the end. So with a very small error, we can assume the analysis applies uh, throughout. Uh, so uh, when to increment T, that's the other big question. And then the uh, uh, obvious answer for that, for that that we didn't really discover till the last minute is uh, it's gonna be when the standard error for T plus four is equal to the standard error for T. Uh, so then we can coast along less than uh, that standard error. And if you do the math, that's when the sketch is 98.8% full. Uh, so that's when we increment T and then it's uh, the Itali analysis applies throughout. So it's M2 to the T uh, log of one over beta. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, oh, and the standard error is uh, 1.46 over the square root of M. That's just the bound on the range of uh, beta that we're always in because uh, we uh, followed this uh, regimen. Okay, so just a uh, real quick finish up with the comparisons. Uh, so uh, what you wanna know is uh, if you have a certain number of bits of memory, how do the algorithms compare? Uh, so uh, the thing is the algorithms use different number of bits per item and you'll find some confusion in the literature on this. So, uh, but I think I make it clear, uh, we're gonna count the number of bits of memory that you use. Uh, so uh, your constant, uh, in the uh, standard error, uh, if you have m star bits, uh, is uh, uh, multiplied by the square root of number of bits per item. Uh, so hyperlog log, uh, the number is 2.35. Uh, hyperbit T, uh, I have it in gray because it's not a streaming algorithm. Uh, it's actually 1.32. Uh, and for hyperbit bits, 2.06. So uh, it's a simpler algorithm, uh, less memory, and even to make it more clear, uh, the, the first to talk about uh, if the sket, if M is really large, like 1024, maybe we're ignoring too many bits uh, in this sketch. 97% of 1024 is still, uh, you know, a dozen or something. Maybe that's bad. Uh, so really, what you want to do is use hyper bit 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 and do a third one. Uh, but that's no good because that uses three M bits. Uh, but there's a simple hack, uh, which we can get the effect of hyper bit, bit, bit with just two bit values. Uh, and this is just to, just to show you because obviously uh, if it's on for T plus eight, it's also on for T plus four and T. Uh, so you just need to keep track of 
uh, which level uh, it's on. And amazingly, if you after you increment, you just decrement those counts by one. Uh, and even more amazingly, uh, there's an amazing uh, hacking thing where you can implement these uh, two-bit counters with two one-bit arrays and use uh, bit logic uh, and just a couple of instructions uh, get this computation done. So that's the appendix uh, of the paper. So now we don't have to worry about uh, any value any value of M. Now we can compare the algorithms. Uh, so what accuracy do you expect for M star bits? Uh, so hyperlog log, uh, like for 128 bits, uh, you're within 26% uh, with Two bits we can get within 18% for the same amount of memory. Uh, and so that's for that. Or if you want to specify the accuracy, how many bits do you need? Uh, and so that's just solving that uh, for uh, that equation for M star. So uh, if you want 20% accuracy, uh, you need 216 bits for hyperlog log, but we only need 106. Uh, or for 2%, again, uh, like less than half uh, as many bits. So uh, that's the result 20 years later, uh, we can improve it uh, by a factor of two, uh, which is uh, great in a world where this algorithm is used for trillions of values all the time. Uh, uh, and so I expect this algorithm might get uh, used uh, widely. Uh, I'm going to point out that what's still open is, I think there might be an algorithm out there that really just uses one bit per value. Uh, we just have to figure out what the increment is, uh, what the threshold is, and what, and what, uh, and what the bias is. Uh, and the reason I think and think there might be such an algorithm that, that over the past uh, eight years, I've tested like a thousand variants on these things. And it does seem to work pretty well for lots of different ideas because that range of T is so wide. All you have to do is kind of get to the right T and then not screw up too much uh, in the interval. But every time that I came up with uh, something uh, specific, uh, Svante had shoot it down saying, you know, you can't do that. You're ignoring too many values. Uh, so uh, this, uh, I think that's uh, still open, but uh, who knows? Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. We have one, one quick question and the rest for coffee break. Yeah. <laughs> Is it a quick question? <laughs> it's like 22. That's not a question. It's like 22, I believe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I wonder if there is not a big mistake here. Uh, 22. Oh, I can't see it. Uh, so, so this is the one in which you you mentioned that uh, you 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 mentioned this idea at some AOFA meeting. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, it's, it's perfect. Okay. Uh, so, so, so here I see a picture. Uh, so it was the AOFA in Krakow, yeah. and it was 2016. 16. Oh, no, that's a big mistake. Big yeah. mistake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. I'll put up a, a bug like that. Nice. 